Hi. Animal magnetism is finished and I decided to make one last little movie about it where first of all I will compare how I started and see what other phases I still have on photo and film to sort of very quickly overview the production of uh, animal magnetism and then I will uh, hang it in my permanent exposition. So this is where we started in a full studio with a blank canvas. Well actually now that I look at it again uh, I think the studio is sort of interesting at least for me to look at because I see lots of other paintings there, all in sort of former stages uh, that have changed since. Uh, but so let's focus on, on animal magnetism. Here we see the deep background. Uh, the first movie is all about how this deep background came about, um, you know, several phases of it. I remember that I really liked it when it was finished. I even, you know, wondered whether I should do anything else with it. But this is how it ended up. And if you look very carefully, you can still see elements of that deep background in this final painting. Here are some of the elements, the way they were originally in the deep background. And I admit some of them have become very, very vague. But I do think they add some uh, interest or, or some depth to the uh, final, uh, final work, the final painting. Um, most of them have been painted over with white, of course, and then with other colors. And so, but if you look at, for instance, behind the magnet, if I may call it like that, you can still sort of trace some of the original, the background. So this is the next phase where I was drawing on the deep background to define uh, shapes for the final painting. And I actually made these drawings during a meeting uh, where I had to do some psychological tasks. And while I was doing them, I was uh, drawing stencils. And some of them I used quite literally uh, in the final painting. Well, if you look on top here and you have to sort of, you know, rotate your head 90 degrees, you can see the very same bird that was uh, already in one of the drawings too. Now, in this phase here, uh, I was whiting out everything except for the shapes. I remember I was a little bit disappointed about this because I thought the painting lost lots of uh, power compared to the original um, original deep background. Here I have it turned, turned around to see, you know, what orientation would be best. And so here we see some details um, of what it looked like with all the uh, areas outside my drawings being whited out. Well, some of them were quite beautiful, if I may say so. This one, for instance, a lot of those would have been interesting paintings on their own, you know, interesting compositions on their own. That's usually very funny if you take a little detail uh, out of a larger picture, it can have a very good composition. And in this phase, I had colored some of the shapes. Um, so the shapes are more defined. The, the background is still there and here I added some dark shapes because I thought the painting had lost too much power from the whiting out so I wanted to add some more contrast even though it did have somehow have enough contrast but I still wanted to enhance the contrast or here is some here's actually one little piece yeah some pieces that some of them disappeared later on and here is the magnet shape that inspired me into the whole idea of animal magnetism. Actually, animal magnetism is a term from very, very classical hypnosis. Uh, but I won't 
go into that now, but I thought it was a funny reference to something psychological to animal magnetism. So then I added some dark shapes and then I thought I also needed some light shapes. So I uh, added some white shapes and this sort of bird-like um, shape that appeared was one of the ones I really liked. So, um, and you know, I could feel the painting moving towards its end here. And so here we have it animal magnetism in all of its glory. Uh, and so now uh, we are ready, I am ready, to hang it in my permanent exposition. It's online, it has lots of my works, uh, and we'll look for a nice place to put it. Okay, so I registered animal magnetism for the exposition. This is an older work that is sort of the inspiration for this whole series, for this whole body of work. This is called No Mortal Man Can Keep a Secret. Here are some older works. Also some new works, smaller works, in this uh, same body of work, which I call Secrets. So the official title is now not only Animal Magnetism, but the secret of animal magnetism. Well, here I do lots of rearranging because I have to make some space for this new work. Actually, I'm sort of running out of space in this exposition. Here I'm adding a frame to it. I think I have a nice bluish frame here. There it is. Okay, so now we are on my website, yaaph.com. And if you just go to yaaph.com, you can very easily enter my exposition and when you are there you can see here animal magnetism on the wall of the exposition um let's see what's what are yeah if we zoom out we see of course lots of other works which are, you might be interested in exploring in this exposition oh yeah this is what i wanted to show here are some two other small paperworks that are in the same vein, in the same body of work, in the same style. This is called uh, The Secret of Rising Up and the other one below it is called The Secret of Dusseldorf Spirits because I made it all, these little ones and several more in uh, a very nice bed and breakfast in Dusseldorf where I was staying together with my wife, Anneke, for a few days. And on my website, there's also a catalog. If you click on catalog, you will see that on the top of the catalog, there is animal magnetism being the latest work. So there you have it. Everything from the blank canvas through all the stages, up until the hanging in the exposition, uh, the total production of animal magnetism. Um, I hope to see you soon again for my next movie and we will paint some more. Bye bye!